Hello, Hateless Gaming here, uh, bringing you another awesome video. Uh, today, the subject of the video is going to be the anti-resin work fleets that I've been running. I'm going to kind of go over our method of flying, uh, what you should expect when you join a fleet, and uh, how to get into fleet. All right, so the premise of this fleet is super, super simple. Uh, we have long-range ships uh, designed to kill Triglavians uh, at a range. Uh, there are no reps, there are no remote reps, there are no... Uh, you don't really take damage, uh, so we're basically just sniping. We have long-range weapons, and we snipe them from afar, and uh, we kill them, and then some salvagers come in and uh, salvage behind us, and then what happens is the loot then gets sold, and you get paid. It's that simple. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do uh, is you're going to want to find out if a fleet is actually running or not uh, today. And the easiest way to do that is to check out Discord, uh, which I'll go ahead and check out my monitor here for that. Uh, so I'll bring this up. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to join the Discord. It is down in the link below. There's a link to my Discord. Uh, and you can click on that. Uh, but you'll go ahead and go to the Discord and you'll click on my little icon here. And you're going to go to the uh, either the Rasenborg Fleet channel or the Fleet Discussion, where we talk about improving the fleet, uh, making the fleet better. And, and then in the Rasenborg Fleet pings, uh, FCs will put out uh, whether when a fleet will actually run. Uh, so you kind of go here and you see if there's going to be a fleet. And as you can see, we, we always post them up uh, whenever they're running. Uh, we post up a, a fleet, the FC will post it up, and then uh, from there... Uh, you can kind of respond to the emote here. It's a lot like Bomber's Bar, but if you're a new player, uh, you just click on the role that you want to fill. So if you're a Naga pilot, you just click on the N. If you're a Marauder pilot, you click on the M. If you're a Tractor pilot, you click on the T. And if you're a Salvage pilot, uh, you click on the S. You can click on more than one if you can fill more than one. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it's that simple. That's how you kind of... Uh, show us participation. This is more of a participation expectation, uh, so we can see how many people uh, we can expect for fleet that day. Alrighty, so the ships that we use uh, for this particular fleet are uh, long-range uh, kiting ships with no prop mods, because we kill everything before it even has a chance to get close. Um, a really simple way to think about it is we're firing out of range, they show up, they die, they don't get to do damage to us. It's really simple. Uh, the reason why the Naga is the backbone or the workhorse of this is it is uh, flyable by a day one pilot, uh, being a, a really awesome low barrier for entry. Uh, and the, the, the tier one brand new pilot is actually going to be able to do something in fleet. Uh, two, uh, they are the best, best suited long range sniping ship, uh, aside from Marauders. Uh, and things that use missiles, as missiles in fleets like this are really bad because missile travel time, the missiles will actually take time to travel. Uh, even auto-targeting missiles have a travel time, and because there's a travel time, uh, a lot of damage gets wasted in that the thing will die before the missiles get there. And um, it is the only ship with large weapons uh, that has both the optimal range bonus, um, has both the optimal range bonus and the DPS bonus. Uh, every battleship and every uh, attack battlecruiser and every battlecruiser, uh, the only exception to that is the Ferox, uh, has the same bonus, but the Ferox uses medium weapons. Um, but because of its ship bonuses, it makes it the best in class at this rule. Uh, more specifically, specifically what we're after. Um, so it ends up being a really good, uh, poor ship to build the fleet around. And uh, when we realize this, this is kind of what birthed the fleet uh, to happen the way it's going. Um, that being said, uh, the fittings are really easy. And the alpha fitting is very similar to this. And you can find the fits linked down below uh, in my EVE workbench. Or uh, you can ask somebody in the in-game channel and they'll be able to link them to you directly in-game. Uh, but we use rail guns, uh, three sensor boosters, three tracking computers uh, for alphas. The sensor boosters are... Uh, tier tier one there at, at lumi and then the uh rail guns are prototype goss cannons and then uh three magnetic field stabilizers and three t2 tracking computers the reason we have t2 tracking computers on the alpha nubro fit is because the uh requirement to use them 
uh, is uh, trajectory analysis four, and this helps your fall off um, a lot. So having this to four uh, guarantees that you have a decent fall off with your ship, uh, therefore kind of making the ship more effective. It's it's one of the support skills that I highly, highly recommend training, and it is in the uh, queue for uh, in the fitting uh, on EVE Workbench, I have a, a scale plan uh, to, to fly the Tier 1 variant. Uh, we will uh, we use three magnetic field stabilizers. Again, the uh, Tier 2 variant uh, is not that hard to train into, uh, being required weapon upgrades uh, to 4 and gunnery to 2. Uh, so everybody should be able to easily use this. It's a really low thing. And again, it's within our skill plan. Uh, we uh, For the Tier 2 variant, we have a hybrid burst serrator and a medium capacitor circuit, circuit and the Tier 1 variant, uh, or the Nubro variant, has a, uh, a capacitor control circuit uh, to help with your capacitor since new, new, new players don't have the strongest capacitors. They have a locus coordinator for additional fall off and a medium ionic field projector for additional range. This fitting is subject to change. So I do recommend you go check out Eve Workbench as this fitting may change it with time as we improve and make it better for what we're doing. Uh, we have made various improvements. We used to have a, a micro warp drive and a cap recharger on them. We realized that wasn't really necessary. Uh, and then for the most part, we're gonna be using plutonium. Uh, and then antimatter is the close range uh, alternative, even for tech two. Uh, Javelin's a little bit too close range and it doesn't quite work. And then Spike is just forever away and is does less damage. Uh, you will always have a uh, scan resolution scripts inside of your boot, your sensor boosters and optimal range scripts inside your tracking computers. That will always be the case. Uh, but that's the Naga fitting. Uh, Marauders are fit with a very simple algorithm. Uh, they are fit with uh, you know their guns. They have two and two, so two sensor boosters and two tracking computers. And then they have three faction uh, magnetic field stabilizers or heat sinks or gyro stabilizers, depending on the ship. I think that the Varder uses four uh, because it, it doesn't need its slow slots for anything else. Uh, and then we fit buffer tank. Uh, in the future, uh, we may take this plate off and put on a signal amplifier uh, for the Marauders. But the Marauder fittings can be found, again, down below. Uh, you can click on uh, the fittings and search Chronos, search Paladin, and search... Uh, Varger, we don't use the Golem for the simple fact that it's a missile-based ship. And again, with the explanation on the missiles, the travel time really doesn't do them well. And with lock plus travel time, you end up not doing a whole lot in fleet. Uh, but that is why we use the Naga and why we like all three of the gun-based Marauders in these fleets. And then I had to give the Golem some attention. Uh, so the, the my solo video on this content is using the Golem to kind of give all four of the Marauders uh, the same kind of attention. Uh, but all four Marauders are really powerful. But for this fleet specifically, we want the gun-based Marauders. Um, yeah, so. Now you've got your ship. You know what we're doing. You have an idea that we're kind of kiting and that we're keeping at range. And you know uh, that there's a fleet. Now how do I get in fleet? It's really easy. Uh, you join the Halo 7 Squad gaming channel uh, in game, and you're going to X up in game uh, while the fleet's running. Uh, frequently, the FC will post, post in a line a lot like this. They'll put a line down, and uh, that line will indicate that the FC is uh, actively looking for members. Uh, so, what you do uh, once you uh, see that the FC is you know, doing what he does, uh, you would X up. And in this case, I have a character in fleet already. I'm just going to invite myself uh, for the sake of simplicity. Um, go ahead, fleet. Uh, am I already in fleet? I'm, I'm already in fleet. So you would X up and you would get an invite from the fleet commander. Uh, you would then ask uh, who to warp to uh, if you are unsure. Uh, normally, if you read uh, the fleet composition, so if, if you look at this menu here in the fleet, uh, you would warp to a DPS member. Warping to any of the people in the DPS squadron is a good idea, or can be a good idea. Uh, sometimes what will happen is you'll warp to them mid warp, uh, so they might be between planets or something, and you'll warp to a mid warp, uh, and that's kind of what happens. Uh, so uh, all you do is you just kind of 
I'm just opening up windows here on accident. Uh, all you do at this point is you undock warp to the fleet and start firing. Uh, and then it's it's really simple stuff. Uh, there's a couple of emergency things that we have to go over, uh, which I will see you guys. Or actually, we'll just go ahead and undock. We'll do a, a unedited. So I'm going to go ahead and undock, and then I'm going to open up my fleet window again. Uh, it's in the Neocom social fleet. So Neocom, find social fleet. So we're here on the fleet. I'm going to go ahead and warp to the FC, uh, the one in, in charge of the DPS command. Go ahead and warp to him. Uh, and they are actually on grid with the, the station right now, so it's a really short warp. We're going to go ahead and warp in this direction. We would turn on all of our computers. Uh, so if you are a, a Naga, you would turn on all six of them. And then I, I like to keep my computers on the bottom. Uh, and then I like to put my guns into two groups. Uh, that way I can guarantee that I actually have a gun ready to fire at something. Uh, even though the, the Marauders have a really low... Uh, really have fast rate of fire. Uh, and then as a Marauder, uh, I siege up. Uh, the other thing that we absolutely need to make sure of is we set our safety to green. If your safety is red, you can shoot a cannon and get concorded. I don't have footage, but it has happened in our fleets. Um, but you would set your safety to green, you siege up, you go ahead and start locking and killing targets. Uh, this fleet kills things fast, so sometimes you can get damage in, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult when we have higher numbers becomes more difficult um but things will just continuously spawn in until they stop spawning in they'll continue until they stop uh and you just kind of show up and you know shoot shoot the targets as they spawn uh there is a priority uh there are frigates in this fleet or there are frigates that spawn uh frigates are always primary uh you want to clear them off grid as quickly as possible as once they get too close uh, they are really difficult to kill uh, and if you're in a Marauder, you should have drones in your cargo ready to help kill them if they get under our guns, uh, which is, it's rare, but it does happen from time to time. As you can see, things are just getting deleted really quickly. Uh, and this is why the ungrouped guns. Uh, I'm just kind of locking things up as quick as possible and then shooting them uh, equally as quick as possible. And as you can see, they just got deleted. So what happens is the frigates get close. Uh, if they get within about 40 kilometers, uh, we, we then have... Uh, we can't track them, as nothing in this fleet has better than 1.74 tracking. Uh, I think maybe there might be a Talisman fleet today, or maybe uh, somebody's fit weird and they have slightly better than 1.74. Uh, but tracking doesn't matter as they fly directly at us. It's not a really big deal, uh, and we just kind of kill them when they show up. It is... I, I, I don't even know how to describe how simple this is. Uh, you show up and you shoot things and you get paid. Like, it, it is that easy. Um, it is probably the easiest fleet to participate in, as there's no broadcasting necessary. Occasionally, the FC will say, hey guys, make sure you're killing the frigates. And normally he or she will say that uh, well before it needs to actually uh, happen, well before it actually causes damage to the fleet. Uh, as you can see, nothing's really getting close, and I'm just kind of firing my guns. Uh, and all the Marauders carry a rep in case they take damage, but it's pretty rare that they actually do. Um, and then... Uh, up there, we have our salvage crew, uh, salvagers. I'm probably going to have to make a second video for salvaging, uh, but salvaging is really easy. Uh, we have uh, two roles in salvage. Uh, one is the tractor beam, and one is the uh, salvager itself. Uh, and we do a two-to-one ratio, so two salvagers for every tractor. Uh, and how that works is they all track the things in, and then one guy salvages. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and then all the loot gets uh, put into an orca, and then the orca will safely get it to the station. Uh, the reason we put the loot in the orca is because Noctai are fairly squishy ships, uh, so we don't want to kind of expose them to that that danger, or expose our loot to that, that danger as much as we want, because squishy ships in space equals dead ships in space. Um, and again, everything in this fleet is kept really cheap, uh, so it's, it's pretty affordable to replace should something die. Uh, but the risk of dying is actually really minimal. As you can see here, I'm just chilling here. I'm not taking damage. They they miss you when they target you. However, if they do get close and you're flying a, a Naga, uh, what you need to do is you need to align to the station and warp out. It's it's really simple. Uh, and then you just warp right back in. Um, yeah, but that's, that's how you fly in the fleet. This is what flying in the fleet actually looks like. You show up. I'm going to go ahead and drop Siege here. Uh, it is very possible that they stop spawning. It uh, looks like they're going to continue to spawn in this situation. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and re-siege again. 
there are a few orders that the uh, that the FC will give. Uh, they're all fairly simple. Um, I'll remind you to fire at uh, small things. Uh, they will tell you to align to station, or they will tell you to align to a planet wherever we end up going. And it's it is simple. The FC warps you around as long as you drop siege. If you miss the fleet warp because you're sieged, or you miss the fleet warp because various reason you just warped the FC, uh, and 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 you'll land right back on grid and be able to continue doing DPS. Uh, you're paid based on time, so the longer you spend in fleet, the more isk you're gonna make. And uh, yeah, show up. You shoot things. You make isk. It's really really simple. I don't know how to make this simpler. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, I'm going to go finish editing this video. Make sure you guys fly fun. Enjoy your time in EVE Online, and I will see you guys in the next one.